I'm Matt Bichard with NairReachReit.com. I'm here at the New York Hilton for REIT Week 2017, NairReach Investor Forum. Joining me today is Connor Wagner, analyst with Green Street Advisors. Connor, thanks so much for joining us. You're welcome. Now, in the apartment sector, Green Street seems to have a differentiated outlook on supply growth than other market participants. Can you explain Green Street's current view? Yeah, we believe that 2018 will not show a material slowdown in supply growth. A lot of market participants have been expecting supply to drop off fairly substantially next year, in part due to a tightening in bank lending. But we have not witnessed starts activity really slow down, um, and we expect that supply growth will only provide uh, modest relief next year. And how do the economics of development look for builders as well as REITs? They still look attractive enough for projects to get started, so it's not as good as it was. Uh, you know, a year or two ago, um, but they can still underwrite 25 to 30 percent profit margins. Deals are still getting done, even though the banks aren't lending as much. Preferred equity has stepped into that hole, and uh, deals still pencil. So, looking historically, we've only seen a few occasions where starts activity has meaningfully dropped off outside of a recession or the capital markets locking up. So, we believe that as long as um, rent growth is still fairly positive and the capital markets are open in some capacity that developers will do what they do, which is develop. Now, taking a look at the other side of that equation, what's your sense of the demand side? The demand side of the equation has come down a bit. Um, so job growth has slowed. We've seen the national job prints come down this year. And then, especially for the REITs, it's really important to look at the market level and then within the markets at the type of jobs that are being created. As the apartment REITs have gravitated more towards the high end of the market, they really need uh, a certain renter to be getting a job or the income growth for that type of renter. So we look at high-end job growth, whether it's tech job growth in the Bay Area, finance and insurance in New York, or even office using job growth across some of the other markets. And we've seen a general deceleration of that job growth. And so um, whether that's just the case that they can't find workers or whether these industries are slowing down. So for the REITs, the hopeful case is that this is just that the availability of workers is low. The unemployment rate for uh, college educated workers is much lower than the national average. So the hope then would be that this would lead to a pickup in wage growth, which would ultimately support rents. But uh, in the near term, we have seen a slowdown in job growth, and I think that's been as much of a factor in the deceleration of rent growth as we've seen with supply. And switching it up to look at the transaction market, what trends are you seeing there? It's been slow year to date, and I think that has to do with the slowdown that we saw in rent growth last year. So as things are decelerating, buyers and sellers began to reset their expectations. And so um, you know, a seller can be somewhat anchored on the cap rate or the asset value that they may have been looking at last year. And so as they bring a property to market, it doesn't meet their original expectations, and they'll just pull the property off. And so there isn't any real distressed activity in the apartment market. If a seller doesn't get what they expected, they'll just wait. Um, and we'll see, really, it, I think the trend will be based on what happens uh, operationally. So if we get strong operations into the summer, um, then sellers might, buyers might be more comfortable um, being a bit more aggressive in their underwriting. We could see some things trade. But it's generally been slow, and I think that's as much to do with what we've seen operationally as buyers and sellers haven't come yet uh, fully to grips with um, the new operating environment that we're in. The NAV model has come under question yeah. a little bit in the market. What do you think is the future of the NAV model? Well, I think the NAV model is incredibly helpful and Green Street, we've always liked it because it's um, something real that you can you can anchor to. You know that ultimately these, there is a, a robust private market for these assets. Um, but a public market investor doesn't necessarily have to accept that. So just because buyers in New York City might be willing to pay a 4% cap rate um, for an asset doesn't necessarily mean that a public market investor has to pay the same thing when they have a variety of options. They can invest in other cities, they can invest in other sectors. So the NAV model is helpful, but it's just a tool. Um, and I think ultimately, when you're looking at an NAV and a cap rate, it's helping you to solve for an IRR. Um, and so an investor, again, it, just because somebody can accept a low five IRR doesn't mean you do in the same way that um, some people would pay a lot of money to go to a concert that I would not pay the same money for. Um, and so uh, just because the private market's willing to pay certain prices. So we think the NAV model is powerful in that it tells you what is happening, but it's not necessarily telling you what should be happening. So that NAV model could tell you that a certain property might trade at a four cap 
and that's true, it is trading at a four cap, it doesn't mean that you have to pay it though. Um, and we've also seen that in the niche sectors where they've traded at a premium to NAV, like manufactured housing and self-storage at times, and even some of the healthcare, and that's not a problem, that's not a bad thing um, if, you're, if you're still able to underwrite a great IRR or expected return. Connor, thank you so much for joining You're us. You're welcome, thank you for having me. For more from REIT Week 2017, be sure to visit REIT.com.